Hi Bobcats, let's take a look at our best modern model of the atom, which is known as the quantum model. Our first objective is to describe the quantum model, and then our second one is to describe how electrons get arranged in shells, subshells, and orbitals. After 1913, a lot more work was done in trying to figure out the structure of the atom. Uh, there were a lot more experiments, a lot more data, a lot more questions. Uh, through the 1940s, the biggest parts of the quantum mechanical model of the atom were developed. Um, we're still working on it today. As uh, new computational techniques become available, uh, they get applied to solving the basic equations of quantum mechanics. So it's still an active area of research. And some of the big names uh, from that time frame were uh, Heisenberg, Dirac, Schrodinger, Planck, Pauli, Hund, and literally a cast of thousands. The Bohr model sort of led the way for the quantum model. So there are a lot of similarities in the models. For instance, in the Bohr model, the electrons were organized into shells. Well, in the quantum model, we organize into shells and subshells. In the Bohr model, the electron orbited in a circular orbit around the nucleus. In the quantum model, that will give way to a three-dimensional shape, such as a sphere. And um, we're also going to lose the concept of this exact position and move to a probability description. There is a high probability that the electron is located somewhere inside of that geometric shape that we call an orbital. And still with the quantum model, we don't really explain why the electron doesn't just spiral into the nucleus. Um, it's much more a situation where the math of quantum mechanics just gives such a great explanation um, of things that we see experimentally that it's um, not such a big deal anymore to, uh, to explain that why. Um, it's just quantum mechanics works, so we go with it. The orbitals take different shapes and sizes. Uh, this diagram is showing the um, S, P, and D orbitals that are found in an atom. Uh, the S orbitals are the ones that are shown up top. Um, an S orbital has a spherical shape, so there's the label S. When we have an S orbital, it occurs always as a set of one. There's just a single S orbital. And so this orbital by itself makes up what we call an S subshell. Then the P orbitals, which are shown in this next layer, um, always occur as a set of three. The P, P orbitals look like uh, two balloons that are uh, stuck together. So if you can imagine blowing up two balloons, tying them off, and then where they were tied, uh, tying the ties together so that you have these two balloons stuck together, the nucleus would be right at that knot, right in the middle. And these three P orbitals together make up a P subshell. P's always occur as a set of three. Then the bottom ones are known as the D orbitals. Uh, D orbitals always occur as a set of five. So a D subshell has these five um, orbitals in it. And one of the things that's kind of a little challenging to visualize is that the nucleus of the atom is right at the origin of all of these axes that are drawn in these diagrams. Um, and so these subshells all coexist on the same nucleus at the same time. Here, this is like a, one of those exploded diagrams that you can, you can separate out the parts to see the individual parts more clearly. Um, but all of these orbitals are simultaneously on the nucleus. The various orbitals and subshells have different energies associated with them. 
just like in the Bohr model, the closer you are to the nucleus, the lower the energy, and the farther away, the higher the energy. And so it's probably easiest to see with the s orbitals. Um, if we look at the 1s subshell, um, 1 is the shell number. That's what we, we use the uh, placeholder n for. So in n equals 1, we have the 1s subshell. Um, it is smaller than the 2s subshell. And that's smaller than the 3s subshell. So as that uh, shell number gets bigger, the, uh, the size of the orbital gets bigger. As the orbital gets bigger, the electron is further away from the nucleus and will be in a higher energy situation. So as you move up this diagram, we get to higher and higher energies. And then if we start throwing in the P and the D orbitals, um, and they just get higher and higher um, energies associated with them. Now, I also wanted to show this diagram to talk um, about what orbitals comprise, uh, shells and subshells. Um, so a shell is any collection of orbitals with the same N. And so I'm going to change the pen here to blue, and um, I'm going to circle um, in blue all of the um, orbitals that are in the same shell. So in the n equals 1 shell, there's just a single orbital. In the n equals 2 shell, there are four orbitals. Three of them are p's, and uh, one of them is an s. And then in the n equals 3 shell, we have a grand total of nine orbitals. Uh, five that are d's, three p's, and a single s. So uh, grand total there of nine uh, orbitals. Now a subshell is a collection of orbitals that has both the same number for n and the same shape, such as s, p, or d. And so let me pull a different color here. I think I'm going to do green. And let's look at all of the subshells that we have here. So I'm going to circle um, the subshells in green. So the 1s, or, or the first shell, also it has uh, the 1s subshell. The second shell has two subshells, uh, the 2s and the 2p subshell. The third shell has three subshells, the 3s, the 3p, and the 3d. Notice there are some strange patterns here. The number of subshells is equal to the number of the shell. So if we're talking the fifth shell, it would have five subshells. Um, also, the number of orbitals that are in a shell will be equal to n squared. So if we're talking the first shell, there's one squared, which is one orbital. The second shell, we have um, two squared, which is four orbitals. And for the third shell, we have three squared, which is nine orbitals. And last but not least, a good guideline to keep in mind is that when we start placing electrons into these orbitals, we can put at most two electrons into any one orbital. So like in the Bohr model, some of these simple mathematical patterns fall out. If our shell is n, uh, the number of subshells within that shell is also equal to n. The number of orbitals in that shell is n squared. And since each orbital can hold two electrons, we can put at most 2n squared electrons into a given shell. And that exactly matches um, how many electrons we could put into a shell in the Bohr model. When we start writing electron configurations in the next video, we're going to be placing the electrons of an atom into the various subshells. So it's important to know for each type of subshell how many electrons can go into it before it's filled. So that's what this um, table is trying to show us. It's saying that if we have an S orbital or an S subshell, its shape will be a sphere and there will be just a single orbital in that subshell. And since there's one orbital, we can put two electrons in there because at most we can put two electrons into a single orbital. 
For the P subshell, the orbitals in there are shaped like a dumbbell, and they always occur as a set of three. So we can put at most six electrons into a P subshell, two in each orbital. For the Ds, they occur as a set of five, and we can put at most 10 electrons in there. And for the Fs, um, they occur as a set of seven, and we can put at most 14. Now the diagrams I've been showing you did not have um, drawings of the F orbitals on them. If you're interested, you can uh, do an internet search for that and see what those F orbitals look like. Um, if you think of the uh, uh, the p orbitals is kind of looking like two s orbitals stuck together, um, and then the d is looking like two p orbitals stuck together. The f's kind of look like two d orbitals sandwiched together for the most part. There, there are a couple other shapes in there as well. So our objectives were to describe the quantum model of the atom. That's where we've, we're going over to the probability description, and we'll talk about how the electrons are arranged in orbitals, and the orbitals are organized into subshells and shells. And uh, yeah, that looks like it for this section.